They've been racing hydroplanes in Seattle for almost 60 years. From the vintage days of V-hull wooden thunderboats that brought crowds to the lake simply by their unmatched noise, to the sleek, screaming bullets of today, powered by jet engines that want to literally take to the air more than stay on the water. In the world of sport, there is nothing quite like boat racing on Lake Washington. One year ago, we added a new name to Seattle's racing record book. Chance he can make up any ground. This Checker flag huge. goes out. Oh boy, Roberto wins the Chevrolet Cup and Fair. The longtime local sausage king finally cracked the winner's circle. First place in Seattle in the hydro race. That's it, believe me. One year ago, we almost witnessed history. That's Kaylee on the inside. It's Craig on the outside. Drag race to the finish. Wow. Craig hopped by a boat length, but what a drive by Kaylee Perkins. Last year taking second, to me, was bigger than winning the championship, just because the fact that that was my first seafarer. Now Kaylee Perkins will tell you that the novelty of a girl driving unlimited light hydros has totally worn off. I'm no longer under the radar, and everybody's kind of put a big target on me, which you know, I guess I've got that coming to me. In 2008, there are new rookies ready to prove they belong. If we can make the final this weekend, that is success beyond what should be expected. And there are veterans with nothing to prove and everything to gain. In Seattle, I always look at it as like a brand new Christmas present that we get that we get in August. It's, it's pretty and it's wrapped up and we all enjoy it and anticipate it. And on race day, we get to unwrap it and see what it looks like. And for some of us, it's it's a piece of coal, and for some of it's a new gold ring. And you just never know what's going to be inside, and this seafarer will be no different. For the 58th straight year, Lake Washington is being transformed into the biggest racing venue in the country, and you have the best seat in the house. It's time to go racing. We're ready for the Chevrolet Cup here at Seafair. In high definition, the Chevy Cup Startup Show is brought to you by Chevrolet. See your Northwest Chevy dealer or visit us online at chevydealer.com. By Southwest Airlines, the official airline of Seafair, with four daily non-stop flights to Denver. And by Mike's Hard Lemonade, proud sponsor of Seafair and the Mike's Hard Lemonade fan care. It is a chilly morning on Lake Washington and first out on the water, the Arcane boat, Kip Brown at the controls. The Elam was out there too. Dave Vilwak looking for that Christmas present to unwrap this year that he just talked about. The Haas Mortgage Investors Boat out there as well. A busy morning on the lake as the rest of us try to stay warm. Race day in Seattle and you have come to the perfect place to watch the Hydros. It's like a small city down here along Stan Sayers Pits and they are home to more than two dozen boats all getting ready, well, to get with it and win a championship. And good morning to all of you. Welcome to the shores of Lake Washington and Stan Sayers Pits for our Seafair Startup Show. I'm Steve Rabel. Glad to have you with us here. Our live exclusive day-long coverage here on Cairo 7. And joining me, as he has so many years before, racing legend, Motorsports Hall of Fame member, Chip Hanauer, as we try to as we try to stay warm up here on the tower, Chip. Well, you said it's chilly. I'm going to do that one better. I think it's darn cold up here. We're up here, I don't know how many feet, but there's a lot of wind. And wind's going to play a factor in today's race. What about cold temperatures we know about wind it can lift uh, lift the boats up but what about chilly temperatures does it affect these turbines it does affect the turbines but it affects them in a really good way these engines love today it's the air is cold and it's moist this is the perfect atmospheric conditions for these engines to make the maximum amount of horsepower but the wind's blowing which makes the boats want to fly so we will we will certainly watch for that today you know it is a fact that as the sun sets in one part of the world it is rising someplace else and that really could be the ultimate story at today's Chevrolet Cup here in Seattle. What does it mean, Chip, when the world of unlimited hydroplane racing starts to get old at one point and young at the very same time? What are we seeing here? We're in an interesting place because there's some wily old veterans that have a few goals they want to get. Dave Vilwak still wants to be the all-time ultimate winner. And, uh, you know, he's real close. I think he's maybe four to seven races away from beating Bill Muncy's all-time record. So he's trying to hang on to get those. He wants those before he retires. And then there's Steve David. Steve David he is, is late in his career, but this is the first time that he's had good equipment. There's two goals he wants to get. One is a national championship. One is a gold cup. And then, then you see a young guy like Jeff Bernard. This guy is 
very intense. He's very, very talented, and he wants one of those boats. He's the, These young guys are looking at that good equipment going, move aside, guys, we want in there. Here's another guy that wants a good piece of equipment. This guy, um, J. Michael Kelly, he probably has more raw talent than anybody I've ever seen, but he's got really not much of a boat. So he wants to get in one of those new or those great pieces of equipment the old guys have. You know, it's really interesting because you see it, and I've seen it certainly in all manner of sports, professional football, all the rest, and basically in all business. The guys start to get up there in age, and those young Turks start looking for their place to move into line, as you say, get the good equipment, get the good rides. Let's take a look at some of the ages and the disparity here in some of these really good drivers who've been around a long time. Now, pick out Steve David there at 54. You know, he's getting towards the end of his career, but he wants that Gold Cup. He had a chance to win the Gold Cup this year, but it didn't happen. Uh, Jimmy King, 47, David Williams, although they're not very competitive, they're kind of at the end of their career. The other guys that you really want to look at, John Theoret. He's not going to be around much longer. He doesn't. He came into Unlimited late in his career, so he's not going to rack up a whole lot of wins. But there's some young guys looking at his boats, and boy, move along. Let me let me in that thing. And then of course uh, the, some guys, uh, J. Michael Kelly, 29. Jeff Bernard, a great talent at 23. Brian Perkins, another great talent. Jimmy Shane, I'm not as familiar with Jimmy Shane because he comes out of Maryland, so he's a little bit of an unknown to me, but these young guys say, get out of here, you guys. Give us that piece of equipment. You were a young guy when guys like uh, the, the Chenoweths of the world, the Muncies of the world were racing. What was that transition like for you? That was a horrible time because in my era, the way you got into the better pieces of equipment, and this is horrible, is guys died. I mean, literally, I kept moving up to better equipment because I was replacing guys who were killed in a hydroplane. And luckily, those days are gone. Now you, you're waiting for the guy to retire, so we're in a much happier time. That's right, and, and talent will out as well. These young guys, as you said, really do have some talent. I believe there's more raw talent on the beach here than there was at any time in the sport, including when I was there. I'm just glad I don't have to race any of these kids. I guarantee you those young guys are thinking the same thing. They're glad you retired because they don't want to have to race no, you. You're kind. One of the all-time greats right here with us as he is every year at Seafair. You know, while, you, while we're up here working and freezing, we want you folks to know that while you're barbecuing, watching at TV, uh, at home, or what have you, uh, what uh, you're seeing between your hot dogs and burgers, you will also have a chance here on our startup show. We'll take you up through 16 races today. We're going to start our coverage this morning with the unlimited heats from yesterday. We put those on tape. That starts at 10 o'clock. Then the first live racing is at 1045. That's unlimited heat 2A. We'll have a complete U.S. Navy Blue Angels action for you at 1.30. And throughout the day, we'll bring you even more coverage of the Key Bank Air Show. That's going to lead up to the Unlimited Lights Graham Trucking Cup at 4.25. And then finally, the big one, the Unlimited Hydroplane Chevrolet Cup Championship at 4.45. So get ready, have that second cup of coffee, enjoy a full day with us. Exclusive live coverage right here on Cairo 7. Now, we also have something fun for all of you to do while you're at home or perhaps you're watching in one of the tents here alongside or you're out here on the shore listening to us. Throughout the broadcast today, we're going to post some questions to you, and we invite you to text us with your comments and your answers. We're going to show you those answers across the bottom of the screen at various times during the racing today, so keep an eye on that. It's our AT&T text in, and it's brought to you by AT&T. And here is our first question, and it's, going to bring up some good discussion, we think. And quite simply, who do you want to win the Unlimiteds today? Who do you think is going to win the hydroplane races today? And more importantly, why? We want you to text us at 51234 and give us a short reason who you think is going to win and why. And just for texting, you'll be entered to win one of the five LG View cell phones, courtesy of AT&T. So start texting and look for your answer coming up in just a bit. Now, we're just getting started this morning, and uh, we will be with you, as we've said, until 5 o'clock this afternoon or later if certain things happen, bad things oftentimes. Standings, uh, standing by at the start-finish tower, two of the greatest hydro uh, hydroplane play-by-play -play guys in the business. We're going to meet the voice of Unlimited Hydroplane Racing, our own Mike Fitzsimmons, and the incomparable Pat O'Day when we come back with more of our 2008 startup show. All a part of the Chevrolet Cup at Seafair. We'll be right back here on Cairo 7. It's a, a scene that you never tire of. 
This has been happening since the early 1950s, and I'm sure some folks here today have been coming to Lake Washington since the very beginning of Seafair. They used to talk about hearing the thunderbolts and coming down over the hill down Genesee and working their way down to the waterfront. In fact, one of our great friends has talked about that. By the way, welcome back to the Startup Show here on Cairo 7. Since 1986, Cairo 7 has been your exclusive Seafair station, and over those 20-plus years, there has been only one voice of unlimited hydroplane racing in Seattle, and that is the man we're going to introduce you to now. Mike Fitzsimmons, you all know him, you all love him, and we are pleased to have him back with us again. And Mike, you were one of those kids who used to come over the hill when you heard the Thunderbolts. Oh, yeah, I'm only about 1,500 feet from my old homestead. So uh, right here where I sit, just over the hill uh, from here is, uh, is the home I grew up in. So, yes, you're absolutely right. I was one of those. In all those years, what, where has hydroplane racing gone and where has it come to where are we right now goes through uh, generations just like life uh, steve and as uh, you and chip were talking about these the new blood is chomping at the bit uh, to uh, to get their day and uh, and the the old veterans uh, the guys who have uh, just about achieved everything there is to achieve are holding on for a few last goals before it's time to say goodbye uh, hopefully some of them will know when to quit and uh, sometimes unfortunately some of them don't but uh, the reality of it is is that uh, we've always had that i remember 50 years ago when bill muncie hit the uh, Coast Guard boat on the South Turn on this very day, a half century ago. And Bill was one of those young bucks and young Jack Regus and uh, young Norm Evans. And those they, they come along, they uh, mature, they achieve, and then it's time for them to uh, give up the cockpit to somebody else. But there's always somebody chasing you, always somebody wanting to uh, one-ups you. Uh, as you know, when, uh, Chip Hanauer is one of those young bucks at one time himself. Uh, but uh, it, it, this is the way it is, not just in, in, in uh, this particular sport, but all of motorsports, all of sports, all of life. And just as the drivers change and they get older and the young guys come up, so too has this technology changed and made the racing in one way, Chip, much, much safer, certainly, than it was before. Well, as we talked about earlier, literally, Jerry Bangs was killed, I replaced him. Bill Muncy was killed, I replaced him. So, luckily now, we're talking about drivers retiring, way, you know, trying to get them to retire. The young guys want them to retire, so the sport's come a long ways. Mike, those older guys and the young guys who are chasing them today are not going to give up anything to this weather. Certainly, they are going to fight tooth and nail to win this Chevy Cup championship. They are indeed, and they're going to have to be careful. The wind is going to be a, a major factor. And let's not forget that uh, we mentioned a number of names who are all already in the unlimited then you have the unlimited lights and there must be a half a dozen guys that are chomping to get their first boat rides and they'll be in the in the lineup too don't forget the tickets are always on sale is there a, is there a dark horse you're looking at today mike i like uh, uh, jeff bernard i watched him test this morning i like him i think he's going to be a factor in this race let's wait and see what happens with that formula boat all right indeed that's mike fitzsimmons he will be calling all of our races today he is one busy gentleman out there at the start finish line a couple of years ago, the Miss Beacon Plumbing and driver Jean Theoret captured the second straight Chevy Cup title here in Seattle. And since then, they could be called the hard luck crew. Our guard Swanson has been covering the Beacon team today and will be throughout the day. Guard. Uh, thanks a lot, Steve. And you know, the Miss Beacon Plumbing having a little bit of trouble this morning. Jean Theoret, the driver, a gearbox problem. What's going on? Yeah, we changed the gearbox last night and we had uh, oil pressure problems. So we took the oil pump apart and put it back together this morning. And we don't have enough time. We wanted to go back in water and uh, there's not enough time. So we're going to go back to the system we had yesterday. How long does it take to get something like that going? That's not too bad. You know, we'll, we'll take the engine out and change the gearbox and put it back in. So probably an hour. And then you guys had trouble last week in Tri-Cities, and look at the side of your boat here. This is a 12-foot section that basically came off. Absolutely. We punched a hole in the side of the boat, and then the deck came off, and the whole section came off. So the guys worked really hard this week. It's probably an hour, around 10 or 15 guys that worked 100 hours. So there's around 1,500 hours of work in one in four days. So the guys were tired, but, you know, we were happy to get uh, some good performance yesterday. And you know what's cool about your team? you got guys from Montreal like yourself. You have another pal here from Montreal. you got people from Detroit who have come here to work on your boat. And you got, of course, the local people from Seattle. Yeah, it's amazing. Our team, you know, we're bonded together. And if we're all over the place, but this Beacon Plumbing team is an awesome team. All right, good luck this afternoon. Thank you very much. All right, John Theoret, Steve, back to you. All right, Guard, thanks very much. It is kind of interesting that they have tried to bury hydroplane racing over the years, and still it is not only a national sport, but we could be talking international again before it's all over, and we'll talk to Chip and company uh, more about that. These boats, some of which might be headed to Dubai before the year is out. 
actually December and January, they're talking about running four exhibition races in Dubai and two, three other Emirates. I'm going to go probably in October to try to give some talks to educate the people in the Middle East about hydroplane racing. So it could be a real shot in the arm, and it's going to be an exciting time for all of us that get to take part. We know that there's funding available over there. That much we're certain of. We understand that uh, they have some dollars to spend on <laughs> yes, hydroplane racing or anything do. else. They do. When we return, we are going to meet another member of our broadcast crew. The incomparable Pat O'Day will be joining us. And coming up uh, into the weekend, the orange Ballard Bullet has to be the boat to beat, we think. Our Bill Rocky takes us into the camp of the Elstrom Elam Plus. My goodness, who is that? What boat is that? Well, that's the Boeing boat with Jimmy King at the controls. That's I, Chip's I, I, ride, I, I'm isn't it? I'm supposed to be in that boat. <laughs> we'll be back. With, I got to go. We'll be back right after this. That is the official's tower at the start-finish line. On that tower, along with the judges, is our play-by-play -play team. Welcome back to our Seafair Startup Show. On this Sunday morning, this very chilly Sunday morning down on the shores of Lake Washington, and there is our good friend who has called probably more hydroplane races than any man in history, Mr. Pat O'Day. Patrick, good morning to you. Well, good morning to you, Steve, and the good news is the weatherman says it's going to warm up a little oh, bit later I hope on. so. I hope so. Hey, you've been around a long time. You've watched a lot of these races. Uh, we saw some pretty good racing yesterday in the first heat. You think we're going to see more deck-to-deck -to -deck today? Well, absolutely. I've never seen such parity. But, you know, a point I want to make is that we kind of get to taking these hydroplanes and these rooster tails for granted. And I think it's overlooked that uh, the skill of the drivers, no less skillful than the winner at Indy 500 or NASCAR, are these drivers. It takes such instant decision-making. It takes such experience and the variables of the water and so on. Uh, to win the Chevrolet Cup here at Seafair, you have to be the ultimate in driving uh, the, the fastest thing on water, which is unlimited hydroplanes, and the technology that goes into these boats. I mean, it so typifies Seattle in many ways, but uh, to make a boat on the water, we'll see boats going down the backstretch on this or rather short course at approaching speeds of 180 miles an hour and riding beautifully through choppy water. I mean, it's a miracle that takes place right before our eyes here each year. You know, you were a boat owner too, Pat, you know, and I think it's pretty interesting that the drivers, very skilled, lots of sponsorship money, but a lot of these teams are made up of volunteers, people who just love the sport, love working on these machines, and love coming out here down to the water every year. Well, that's one of the great things about Seafair and about unlimited hydroplane racing is the volunteerism that's involved. It's because of the love of water, the love of speed. Uh, and again, Seattle's the headquarters for these unlimited hydroplanes because Seattle is enraptured with speed on the water and uh, the joy of rooster tails and unlimited hydroplane racing. A handicap uh, from you, Patrick. Who do you like today? Oh, I watch out for the Haas mortgage uh, that the Gregory's boat out of Las Vegas, the U-10. He purchased, you know, the Steve Woomer uh, racing team after Steve passed away, and they've come a long ways, and uh, and a great young driver and Gary Bryant. So I, that's an outside dark horse, but watch out for the U-10. Very good. We'll keep our eye on that. Pat O'Day at the start-finish line with our Mike Fitzsimmons. Patrick will be hearing from you, of course, throughout the course of the day. Also in the pits today, which from where our position right here is directly to my left down on the water's edge, uh, he has been with uh, Cairo 7 for more than 10 years, our sports reporter Bill Rocky, and he will be covering the east side of the pits today, and that includes the Elam team. Bill? Thanks, Steve. I'm with Dave Velwalk, and Dave, it's hard to believe you haven't won here since 2004. That, that's got to be eating at you. Well, we're always, it, I, I'm probably more determined this year, and I've been a long, long time, but... The, the charity thing has really given me sort of a niche to really work on. I just I mean, I try to do something for Ronald McDonald's. Uh, the boat's never been this good, so you know, it's in my lap right now. I, I, we're, we're in good shape here. You're going to see the old Dave come out, and I apologize for anything I might do throughout the day. In advance, I apologize. The weather has changed. The wind's coming from a different direction. We can see our breath out here. How, how different is that going to make things here, at least in the morning? It sure will. And, and the, you know, getting in 
you know, in the past, inside, being on the inside here, when the wind's blowing this direction, is going to be a bad place to be. So, uh, you know, the Elstrom freight train is going to be coming. So we'll see how the guys can handle that inside inside action early on. Last year, you you were in pretty good shape going into the final, but things didn't work out for you. What were you trying to do in that race? What lane were you trying to get, and what happened? Uh, we were in lane one, and we were in good shape, really right on the timing marks to go. And, and unfortunately, uh, Jean Thierry couldn't see where he was going and ran over in front of us and, and put the motor out, and our race was over. So and that's what happens. Sometimes you just things don't go your way, and, and that day looks like a sure win turned into a sure loss. Uh, Dave, good luck the rest of the way today. Uh, Steve, back up to you. All right, Bill, Dave, thanks. I, I just wanted to ask Chip, these guys have been very cordial here first thing this morning. I used to cover the pits when you were a driver. You weren't very cordial first thing in the morning before races. I'm not very cordial in the morning well, <laughs> anyway. anyway. So, you know, when you add a boat race, you know, that's going to go on at 200 miles an hour, it makes you grumpy. Yeah. So you were just, you were more focused perhaps on, on your job at hand rather than talking to people like me. <laughs> and actually, there's a guy here that I think has a lot of that same kind of focus actually two guys uh, one of the, the veterans Jean Thierrette he's like me he was just didn't want to talk to anybody he was focused and a new guy Jeff Bernard he is focused like a laser which I really like in a race driver well it worked well for you it worked a lot of okay. races Now there's a great perch to watch the boat races out on the Spirit of 76 and the log boom. What do we figure, about 300,000 people between the shore and out on the log boom, and well, it's just a great day for watching Seafair boat races. We just wish it were a little warmer at this point in the day, but it'll, it'll warm up, sun's gonna come out. We know that's gonna happen, it always does. Welcome back to the Startup Show. I know what you're wondering at home. Just how difficult is it to drive a hydroplane at 150 miles an hour around Lake Washington out here? So we decided to look for the very best driver we could find for that answer. Where is he? Well, that's right. Dave Vilwalk is busy. But we have asked Chip Hanauer instead to join us and talk to us about driving. And you were out in the U787, correct? I was. I drove the boat on the Boeing boat. Friday, the Boeing boat on Friday and Saturday. Now this boat was being run on biofuel, yep. and this is not the biofuel that they ultimately want to get to because this biofuel is based somewhat on a food source. We, but we want to get to a, a renewable, totally renewable fuel uh, that would be based on algae. And the engineers at Boeing told me, for example, maybe by next year they will have actually a biofuel or renewable fuel that is totally a non food sourced uh, so fuel. So we're pretty excited about that. And you ran this boat almost 150 miles an hour. We ran, I think, uh, 147.762 to, to be exact. To be exact, but who's counting? And one of the things we did was we put a camera in the cockpit of the boat with you, and you're going to take us around the course here on Lake Washington. Yeah, this is the boat leaving the dock. And what you're feeling right now is, uh, well, we, that didn't last long, but the windshield goes awash. You can't see where you're going until the boat gets up on plane. Once the boat's up on plane, this is kind of the view you get. Now, obviously, you're seeing just the left side of the boat, and but I'm seeing that view and the same view on the right-hand side. If you look to the left there, you see that little flap. Well, that's like a flap on an airplane wing. And part of that movement you're seeing is actually the vibration of the boat, and some of it is my left foot. And what that flap's going to be used for today on these boats is when the boat turns into the wind, like we're seeing right now, I'm kind of turning now into the north wind, um, this, you're going to see those flaps go up to try to hold the bow of the boat down. As the boat goes downwind, you're going to see that flap go the opposite direction, down to try and lift the boat up as it's got the wind at its back. You know, there were some problems yesterday in the lights heats. They right. couldn't find their way around the sure. race course. But if you look through this perspective that you're seeing on this camera here, that's really what you see. So how is, easy is it to pick out the buoy you're looking for? The Unlimiteds have it kind of easy because they go around the outside of all the buoys. But the lights guys, they have to find their course inside of the Unlimited course. So they have a real challenge. And you're going 180 miles an hour while you're finding all those buoys. Yeah, you're going 180 miles an hour, actually more like 190 miles an hour, and there's a lot of vibration. And, and typically what happens when you come out of the corner, you're looking for that buoy that's going to be your next mark. And whatever buoy you focus on, that's the buoy you focus on. And if it happens to be the wrong buoy, it can lead to some problems. Wow. 
Yep. You don't want that to happen. Well, yeah. thank you for the tour. We appreciate it at 150 miles an hour in the boat at 147, 8, 9, whatever. 760. That's right. Coming up, he once, he once owned the boat that was always a sentimental favor, uh, say, uh, favorite at Seafair. Remember the Miss Rock boat? He also once had four boats here in the Stan Sayers Hydro Pits. We are talking to one of racing's living legends, owner Fred Leland. That's coming up. And the boat way out on the log boom just may be one of the most famous in the country. It's the Norwestern from the TV show Deadliest Catch. We'll take you on board later today right here on Cairo 7's coverage of the Chevrolet Cup at Seafair. Which way am I and towards you. Yeah. There is the long boom on Lake Washington. There are the race fans and the air show fans set to enjoy another great seafair. And that's all coming your way. If you can't get out to the log boom or down on the shore, you'll join us right here on Cairo 7. And we're so glad that you're with us. Welcome back to the Chevrolet Cup startup show here on Cairo 7. Live coverage all day long. You know, once upon a time, a local hydroplane owner actually brought four boats, count them four, down here to the pits at Seafair. He also won here in what could easily be called the most amazing victory in Seattle racing history, and he continues today, three decades, more than 30 years after he started in this business. Chip and I are very, very happy to welcome Fred Leland to the Startup Show. Fred, nice to see you. Well, thank you. It's nice to be here. You brought one boat this time, four boats a few years back. Well, we were kind of bucking Budweiser at the time, and so we brought four boats to outdo them. What were those memories like of racing against the great Bernie Little and those battles that you guys used to have? Oh, it was some fun days. You know, it, uh, we had Chip, and, and it was some great times. Now, the most famous win maybe of all time was the flipping win. Take us through that day of what happened and what the end result was. Well, we went upside down in the second heat. Uh, I think we were the first people to ever flip in a boat race and come back to win. Uh, I had a really good crew at the time. Uh, Danny Walters wasn't with me anymore, but he happened to be walking by and helped us, and we got it all back together. How much damage was there to the boat after the flip? It's pretty minimal, actually. I mean, wings and the steering was bent a little... All the electrical had to be gone, too. And your driver, Mark Evans, what was his attitude at that point? Well, he he was all right with it. Uh, he was coming up for the start, and I got on the radio, and I said, you know, if you just put your foot in that, you could win this, and he did. Well, that, that just is going to go down, I think, when 40 years from now, that's going to be one of the let's. That's right up there with Bill Muncy hitting the Coast Guard boat. And yeah. Other things. yeah. Now, now you fun. started with boats that really weren't all that competitive, right? Right. Yeah. Take, take us back to the KSW days. You had a driver that actually is one of my favorite personalities of all time in the sport, Jack Berry. He was just so much fun. Well, he he drove for me for a couple of years, and, and he was. He had a good personality. I don't think he really ever really wanted to be a driver that won. He wanted a pit pass. But yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> but he got a lot of fun out of it, and he was a great person. And the KISW boats, were they the first boats you came here with? And didn't you come here first as a driver? Yes, I drove the Sunny Jim, uh, uh, Miss Burian Hobby. Mm -hmm. And then when I built my first boat was when I was KISW. And Fred, bring us now up to today. You've got the MirageBoats.com down here in the pitch. Greg, hop at the controls. Uh, yes. How do you feel about the boat and your chances today? Well, it's better. We've had a lot of problems all year. Uh, when anytime, you know, you get to struggle and things don't go good. And when you're on top, it's easy to be on top. Fred, one of the all-time greatest days in my racing life was winning a gold cup for you in 1999. Nobody expected us to win. The Budweiser was the dominant boat, and you gave me a boat in the final like no boat I've ever had. I don't know how big a deal that was for you, but Fred, absolutely one of the high points of my career. It was a pretty big deal for me, too. I mean, anytime you can upset Budweiser, you know, they were the greatest. 
Did you have to give him a pep talk beforehand? No, he was pretty gung ho. He <laughs> liked the boat. Yeah. And, and then I also let him down that year as well. We we had him beat uh, two weeks later in Evansville, Indiana, and I jumped the gun by about two or three inches. And <laughs> poor Fred had to console me. I was in tears in the <laughs> truck because I had him beat, and the, the the camera showed me just this much over. So I, I still owe him a beer. It's just part of racing, right, Fred? Yeah, it is. I mean, racing's up and down. Speaking of which, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm, you know, I'm going to get better. You've, you've been battling some health problems. Right, but I'll be fine. Well, we're glad you came up here and joined us today. All righty. You're a, you're a credit to the sport, my friend. Thank you very much. Thank nice you to be here. Thank you for joining us. Fred Leland, a name that you have heard so many, many times here in the hydroplane pits at Seafair. We're getting close to racing today on Lake Washington, and that means we're also getting closer to all the air show acts that are here today. We'll show you the schedule for the amazing Blue Angels. We'll introduce you to the lead pilot, the one they call Boss. That plus more of Cairo 7's exclusive coverage of the Chevrolet Cup at Seafair. The Chevy Cup Startup Show has been brought to you by Chevrolet. See your Northwest Chevy dealer or visit us online at chevydealer.com. By Southwest Airlines, the official airline of Seafair with four daily nonstops to Denver. And by Mike's Hard Lemonade, proud sponsor of Seafair and the Mike's Hard Lemonade Fan Cam. And now it's time to join public address announcer Mark Allen and the opening ceremonies for the 2008 Chevrolet Cup at Seafair. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the opening ceremonies, the 2008 Chevrolet Cup at Seafair, the 58th unlimited hydroplane race on the Ted Jones race course on Lake Washington. Right at the start finish line, our MH60 helicopter with the American flag, Old Glory, flying. You'll notice a young man suspended below the flag. That's Petty Officer Christopher Wedding, and he is there to help stabilize the American flag. Now please rise as we honor America with the playing of the Star Spangled Banner and remain standing as we honor our competitor from Canada, Jean Theoret, with the playing of O Canada. Thank you. 
pilots today for our NAS Whidbey Island MH-60 helicopter, Lieutenant James Udall and Lieutenant Bruce Casey, Cruise Chief, Petty Officer Chad Lewis. Now, let's go boat racing. All right, Mark Allen, thank you very much. And thank you for the very stirring opening ceremonies here. We're just about to set to go racing. And as we do prepare, Chip, you were in these boats for so many years. What are these drivers thinking right now? This is the most difficult time of the day. You know what's coming. You've got some challenging conditions out here. And as a driver, you're feeling a number of things. Number one, you're nervous about trying to win. You feel the pressure. These guys have worked so hard, so many hours on these boats. You don't want to go up and mess it up. So you want to deliver, but you also don't want to crash. And that's a problem because these boats, to go fast, you got to get them out of the water. The higher out of the water they go, the faster they go because there's less drag. But, of course, then you can blow over. So these drivers are trying to walk this really fine line between crashing and winning, and it's tough. All right. And then, of course, the boats have already had last-minute adjustments done, so they are set, as are all of we, and we hope are all of you as well. It's time to go racing, as Mark Allen said. The Chevrolet Cup at Seafair. Will it be a battle between last year's champion, the old boy Alberto, and the Elam boat? Will we have deck-to-deck -deck racing? Might we have some problems before the day is out? All coming up, Unlimited Heat 1A, just around the corner. We'll be back. Stay tuned to Cairo 7.